Hi and welcome to video two. This is the second of two videos for section 2.2. And first thing we're going to talk about is what's known as a differentiable function. So definition, and this is number three in this section here, or chapter, a function is differentiable at A if F of A, F prime of A exists differentiable on an open interval A to B if it is differentiable at every number in the interval. So we kind of look at a point and then expand it to a whole interval. So a function is differentiable if its derivative exists at that point A. And then it's and a function is differentiable on a whole interval if it's differentiable at every number in the interval. Kind of makes sense. This gives us a theorem, theorem 4, which says that if f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous. So remember, we're going back to this idea of continuity. So a function, if it's differentiable at a point A, then it's continuous at that point. Now just a note, the reverse is not necessarily true. So if a function is continuous, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily differentiable. So how can it be, how can it fail? So how can a function fail? to be differentiable. So think about what the derivative is telling us. It's telling us that the most basic form is it's the slope of the tangent line, right? So the first is if we have corners, or points maybe in a graph. So, for example, if I have the, abs the graph of the absolute value function, it looks like a V, right? Well, obviously on the left side, the slope is all the same here, but when I get to the point zero, what's, what's the slope of my line at zero? I have no idea, because there's uh, the slope of the tangent line, because it, it could be all the way around here. There's no smooth part of the curve that the line would be touching. So if it has a corner, it's not... It's, not differentiable at that corner point. The other is discontinuity. So we have these different types, right? We had jump continuity. Uh, we had the hole. So for example, if I have a graph that looks like this, obviously at this point, there's no tangent line. So I can't differentiate it at that point. And then lastly is a vertical tangent line. So if I come up over here, let's say I have some curve that looks like that. Well, 
at some point here, if my tangent line is a vertical line, what's the slope of a vertical line? It's undefined, right? So in that situation, I wouldn't be able to differentiate it. So those are the three situations where a function can fail to be differentiable. So the last idea here of section 2.2 is the idea of higher derivatives. So up until this point, we are looking at what? We are looking at the first derivative. We have some function, we take its derivative. That's one time the first derivative. We don't necessarily have to stop that. We can keep going. We can take it as many times as we can until we get zero. So for example, if we have the second derivative, this would be notated as f double prime of x, so two little hash marks. Or it also has the notation, special notation for the second derivative. We have d squared y over dx squared. If you see this notation, this also means it's the second derivative. And again, all we're going to do is repeat the process. So for example, if I have, like the example we looked at the very first uh, video for this section, the very first example, we had f of x is equal to x to the third minus x. If we want to find the second derivative of x, well, we had what? The first derivative of x, we'll do it again, but 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, so 3x squared minus 1. Again, that was the very first example we looked at in this section. That's the first derivative. The second derivative, I just take the derivative of the one I just found. So the same process. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 minus 1 is 1. So 6x, and then the minus 1 goes away. So the second derivative of this function is just 6x. If we continue, so that's the second derivative. We can have the third derivative, fourth derivative, etc., 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 as long as we want to go. So if we continue on here, the example continued, find the third derivative. So that gets three little tick marks there. And and after we reach 3, then we just start putting the derivative in parentheses. So I want to find the fourth derivative of x. So instead of putting four little marks, I just write a 4. If you have bad eyesight and there's a bunch of those little marks, you might not be able to see. Is it 3? Is it 5? Is it 4? What is it? So we put the number in parentheses. So the third derivative of this guy is I just take the derivative of the second derivative again. So f triple prime or the third derivative of x is the derivative of this. 1 times 6 is 6. x to the, fir, uh, x to the 0 is 1. So the third derivative of this function is just 6. And lastly, the fourth derivative of x with respect to x is the derivative of this one. Derivative of any constant is what? It's 0. So the fourth derivative and any derivative after that is just going to be zero. So that's it. Short and sweet for section 2.2. Uh, come on back, we'll do section 2.3 and start getting into some more shortcuts and uh, simplifying some of these processes.